With Adam Copeland, the talk of the town right now in the world of pro wrestling, making his AEW Dynamite debut on Wednesday. Now the speculation is who's next? Everybody's wondering what ex-WWE superstar will jump ship to AEW. I got all the news on all those names potentially jumping ship right here on the podcast. Also, a major match for John Cena at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. What does WWE have planned? And Jade Cargill already has a brand. Is it Raw or is it SmackDown? All this plus so much more right here on Off The Script. Let's start with the free agents, man. There's a lot of free agents out there. Most of them won't be able to do much of anything until the beginning of the new year. Let's start with Mercedes. Obviously, the biggest name of everybody out there. Not really a free agent. She's tied to New Japan Pro Wrestling. But Mercedes was invited to All In as a guest by Tony Khan. She was featured on TV not once but twice. Mercedes being featured on TV pretty much was a dead giveaway that she would be working with AEW at some point when she was 100% ready to go. She was interviewed on Wednesday on After Buzz TV, and she said that she could be at Full Gear in Los Angeles this November if she got invited by AEW. She didn't say that she would be wrestling or signing with the company, but it's worth noting that Tony Khan and Mercedes have talked before, and like I said, she was invited by Tony Khan to sit in the press box at Wembley Stadium for All In. Soraya has also made it very clear that she wants Mercedes in AEW and wants to work a program with Mercedes, potentially over the AEW Women's Championship. She will be there. I know a lot of people are probably upset and they're just tired of the Mercedes news. Don't wake me until it actually happens. I'm tired of people talking about it. But it's big enough, and she's big enough, that if she does land over there, it's going to be one of the biggest signings in company history. So we have to talk about it, because it's absolutely going to happen. Nobody knows when, but uh, I do expect her over there before the end of the year. Dolph Ziggler, he seems like another obvious choice to sign, and he can go wherever he wants. Obviously, he's one of the more respected names of the bunch that were released by WWE, uh, one of the best uh, pound for pound pro wrestlers, maybe in the world, is Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Rock gave him some flowers. John Cena gave him his flowers on social media as well. And he's somebody that's going to go in there and work that AEW style and have banger matches, man. That's what they're known for. And Dolph can absolutely do that, help out the younger talent, be a producer, an agent, take everything that he's learned in WWE and pass it on to the young kids in AEW and just be a locker room leader that they so desperately need. And they've gotten a boost with Adam Copeland there. Now, it doesn't hurt that he has a lot of friends in AEW either. And his brother, Nick Nemeth, also works there. And a lot of people are speculating that they actually may become a tag team in AEW, which would be very interesting. I fully expect Dolph Ziggler to make the big money. And I do expect Tony Khan to offer Dolph Ziggler a deal to join all elite wrestling. Same thing with Mustafa Ali, but AEW is not Ali's only choice here. Ali's another name that would be a great get for AEW, works the style, creative freedom. He has the platform and the canvas to do whatever he wants that he wasn't able to do in WWE. If not right away, I would expect him in New Japan, maybe Impact, and then do AEW. But if not AEW, he would kill it. In impact, And I do think that right now, if I was to put money on where he'd land first, I'm going to say, I think Ali's going to impact. So I think that would be a major get for uh, the impact crew over there. And Fightful even reported that there were plans for him to win the North American Championship right before his release. And his release was a late decision by the higher ups. Ali's another guy that people in WWE felt had a lot to offer, a lot or a lot more to offer than what the creative team really gave him over his run there. So I think that's going to be a great get for Impact. I would see him being in the X Division. I could even see him challenging for the World Championship over there. That's how good he is. So we'll see what happens with Mustafa Ali, but he's got options and he will 
find work very easily. Shelton Benjamin's another name. Seems like another likely choice for AEW. I know there was a report from Fightful where Sean Ross Sapp reported that Benjamin is someone that several in AEW want to see there. There have even been pitches by some podcasters, including me and Andrew Baydala on Tuesday night, where Shelton Benjamin uh, joining the Blackpool Combat Club would not be that bad of an idea. So I do think that Shelton Benjamin will join AEW. Matt Riddle seems like an obvious choice for AEW as well, depending on if they want to put up with his uh, antics outside the ring and deal with all that comes with Matt Riddle. Right now, he's a big question mark because of his recent issue at JFK Airport uh, in New York, and he's been previously accused of sexual assault, so someone uh, might actually uh, ruffle up some feathers again when they sniff that Matt Riddle is going to go and do something new, potentially with a new company like AEW. This may be someone that Tony Khan wants to stay away from because he doesn't need this anymore. We got Adam Copeland there. Things are finally starting to feel right. The television shows are clicking uh, better than they have been in recent weeks. And you're going to bring someone like that into the locker room. We don't even know if the current locker room would welcome Matt Riddle with all of his problems, seeing that the locker room is finally getting to a point where it needs to be. So uh, he's not going to find it difficult to find a new place to work, but his entire being and his history and his behavior is going to be something that's going to limit him in getting the most out of what he can get from an AEW or an Impact or, or anywhere. He may end up in New Japan for all we know. He may end up in MMA at some point. We don't know. But Matt Riddle undoubtedly will be making money, and Matt Riddle will be finding work very easily. Dana Brooke, Mansoir, Massey, Dabakato, Tabdala, Elias, Riddick Moss, Emma, Aaliyah, all these names were released by WWE. I can see most of these names in Impact. I could see Dana Brooke doing it in the women's division over on Impact Wrestling. I could see Mansoir and Massey being a tag team over on Impact Wrestling. I could see Elias go to Impact Wrestling. I could also see Elias do the New Japan thing as well, man. I think that would fit pretty well. Over there, Riddick Moss, I feel like he'd be great in Impact. Emma, I could see her do. She's done the Impact thing. Maybe AEW wants to give her a try. Maybe both Riddick Moss and Emma go over to AEW, being that they're, they're a package deal. I, I don't know. Aaliyah, I don't really care. And uh, Top Dollar, I did mention. I don't know if Top Dollar is going to want to do pro wrestling. I think he's got more upside outside pro wrestling than he does inside the pro wrestling industry. So those are the names. Those are the names that are floating around out there. And uh, there is speculation right now that AEW will be looking at a majority of these contracts when they are able to talk to these talents. Let me know what you guys think and where these specific talents are going to end up and where you'd like to see them end up, whether it's Impact or AEW. Jade Cargill. Apparently, WWE's decided what brand Jade Cargill will be working on. NXT should be the brand, but I don't think that's going to be the case, being that they rolled her debut out and her signing out on ESPN. PW Insiders reporting this week that the early word from people in WWE is that Jade Cargill will be on Monday Night Raw. As previously reported, it is expected that she will be going straight to the main roster. Cargill signed with the company last week, and they've been pushing her signing as a huge deal on TV and on their social media platforms, which is an indication that they have big plans for her in the long term. The belief is that she will be on TV by the end of the month and possibly sooner. WWE wants a quick return on that investment. Is she going to be ready to go, man? The microscope is going to be on. It's going to be magnified. It's going to be cleaned. And it's going to be ready to go, man. I can't wait to see how much Jade Cargill has enhanced, being that we just saw her on TV less than a month ago on AEW. Cargill recently left AEW after negotiations with Tony Khan, who stated at the Wrestle Dream Media Scrum that he wanted to keep Cargill in AEW, and he offered her more money to stay, but she turned down the offer to sign with WWE because it certainly wasn't enough money to stay. Now, money's not the only thing that drew Jay Cargill to WWE. It's what they are going to end up doing for her to make her into a household name, and that's exactly what they are going to do. They are well on their way to doing that already. She hasn't even been on TV. Now, the rumor is that she will be at this Saturday's Fastlane 
In what capacity? I don't know. She will be there, according to Mike Johnson, PW Insider. Will she be on the show in a physical capacity? Nobody knows. Is she going to be welcome to the show via the uh, NXT TakeOver debut where she's sitting in the crowd and they give her a spotlight and people start chanting, holy shit, because Jade Cargill, a former AEW talent, is now on WWE television? I don't know. But Mike Johnson's reporting that she will be there on Saturday night, so it should be a very newsworthy review as always. But Raw, I'm surprised by that. I'm surprised by that, and I'm not surprised by that because SmackDown's pretty stacked at the top. I wish they'd do more to build some of the undercard women, but they are pretty stacked over there on Friday night. They got Bailey, they got Charlotte, they got EO, they got Asuka, they got Bianca. That's a lot of women. That's a lot of women over there. For a top-tier division, uh, that is a lot of women over there. Like I said, I wish that they would build up some of the lesser-known women so that they can bring them up to where things are about even. Jade going to Raw actually makes a good decision because Rhea Ripley has nobody as far as competition goes on Monday night. The only one that she has right now is Nia Jax, and that's not going to be a long-term thing. They only brought Nia Jax in to to be a short-term solution to Rhea Ripley. So now if Jade goes to Raw, we could potentially get Rhea versus Nia, Rhea maybe against Becky, and Rhea versus Jade may actually end up being the WrestleMania match that they end up going with. So uh, WWE is ready to get that uh, ball rolling with Jade Cargill. They're ready to get that uh, return on investment going. And I hope she's ready, man. I I genuinely, genuinely hope that she's ready. I seriously hope so. You would think that she'd go to SmackDown because of the way she looks and she's got just movie star written all over her. And SmackDown, you know, the big boys play over there. She's going to Raw. It's quite the decision there, man, but it may have something to do with the fact that, you know, Jade Cargill going to Raw, SmackDown's going to end up on USA Network anyway, so why uh, why appease Fox and give them Jade Cargill for the rest of the year when she could go to Raw and be on the USA Network? Fuck Fox. So we'll see what happens with Jade. Apparently, Monday Night Raw is her new home, and she will be at Fastlane, reportedly, uh, by Mike Johnson of PW Insider this Saturday at Fastlane. We got news on John Cena. Big match planned for John Cena at Crown Jewel. WWE's planning on returning to Saudi Arabia in November for Crown Jewel. As of late, he's been paired with L.A. Knight on television, and the team is slated to take on Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso this Saturday at Fastlane. Next Tuesday, Cena is going to be on NXT to be in the corner of Carmelo Hayes when he takes on Braun Breaker, who will have Paul Heyman In his corner. (laughs) Desperate. (laughs) Sorry, man. I'm uh, I'm still getting over whatever I had a couple of weeks ago, man. (laughs) Sorry. Now, while speaking with the Wrestling Observer Live, Dave Meltzer pointed out how it feels like WWE is building towards Cena versus Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel next month in Saudi Arabia based on what we've seen on TV so far. This is not a report, but purely speculation. Meltzer says, so it feels like maybe Saudi Arabia is Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Alvarez then chimes in and says, well, they've got to get something going there. It's probably going to be John Cena just because they pay so much money for those main events. But clearly at some point soon, I think Survivor Series is going to be LA Knight. Meltzer then says, yeah, I think LA Knight feels right afterwards going in that direction early. And then finally, Cody Rhodes or Dwayne Johnson. Alvarez then says, yeah, I guess we'll figure it out. My guess would be Cody Rhodes. Meltzer then ends and says, I don't know. I'm not in Dwayne's head, so I don't know what he's thinking and saying and things like that. But if he wants it, it's his. It's just a question of whether he does or not. End quote. I know they're going to end up doing LA Knight versus Roman Reigns. Uh, I I don't want to see that. I I think LA Knight is better than that. Why are we going to do that only to feed him to Roman, who's eventually going to lose to Cody? It it seems like it's counterproductive there. Now, LA Knight against Roman Reigns in Chicago, I mean, they could build a nice story there, and that crowd is going to be so pro LA Knight, it's going to be a fucking sight to behold. But at the end is the outcome, and that's the only thing I care about. Loss. Loss for LA Knight. Where, Where does he go from there? He loses to Roman Reigns. He loses in Chicago at a chance at the Universal Championship. 
Where does he go from there? I don't know. WWE will then be fast-tracking Roman onto Cody or Roman onto Dwayne, and LA Knight is going to be in the rearview mirror. Where do they go from there with LA Knight? So you want to take him, just, just picture it. You want to take LA Knight from doing this, then you want to put him against Roman Reigns, and then he goes down this way instead of continuing to build him up this way. Why are we putting him in a championship match based on the fucking reactions of the fans when we know it's not his time? There's a problem with that. I find a big problem in that. If it's not his time, why are we using him as a stepping stone for Cody Rhodes? I don't like that. Now, Cena, I don't really give a shit about because Cena and Roman Reigns is the type of match you would expect at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. And Cena's not going to be here for all that much longer, being that Hollywood should be getting back on track relatively soon. But why are you going to do LA Knight? Cena, I understand, but LA Knight? I don't understand that at all. I would rather Cena and LA Knight go one-on-one -on -one instead of anything, honestly, and put LA Knight over. But this is WWE. They think that they're doing good. Oh, look, look, we're pushing LA Knight. He's wrestling for the world championship. Loss! It's going to end up being a loser and nothing more than a stepping stone for Cody Rhodes. That I don't agree with. Guys, thank you very much for all your support. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up. Sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Who's going to land where as the free agents are out there floating around until the end of December? Do you think LA Knight should wrestle Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship? Or do you got another opinion on that? Make sure you guys sound off in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below as well. Turn on the bell for notifications. And follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Thank you guys so very much. I'll see you tonight live for Friday Night SmackDown. See you guys later.